Another debate is in the books tonight, wrapping up in just the last hour as Democrats try to prove they can beat President Trump this year. Natalie Brand is in South Carolina ahead of the weekend primary vote with the debate recap under two minutes. I'm hearing my name mentioned a little bit tonight. <laughs> right. Who can do that? And we're joining you live from the spin room so you can see candidates still roaming around giving final closing arguments following this debate. And that includes Senator Bernie Sanders, who spoke to our CBS News colleagues. They asked him again about his controversial comments regarding Fidel Castro and Cuba. He once again defended them and also reiterated the point that he made on the debate stage, saying his policies are not radical, also referencing. Seeing Vermont's proximity to Canada and the policies there. Galen. Natalie, thank you so much for joining us live here tonight. Now to you, what was a standout moment from the candidates that you feel may have been lost in some of the noise? Well, I think you could really get a sense, Galen, of the, the pivotal time when this debate is taking place. The stakes are so high with these critical contests just around the corner. So you could really kind of sense that tension on stage. Some of these candidates, they know it could be their final shot to make an impression. But we also saw candidates more prepared for the attacks uh, that were coming from all directions. And we saw uh, Bloomberg improve upon his performance from last week and then obviously Bernie Sanders as I mentioned kind of being unapologetic for some of the the recent criticism that he's received the big question that remains to be seen what do voters especially here and in Super Tuesday states including Vermont think about how the candidates perform tonight and how does that shape their opinions in these critical contests now, we could hear some of the reactions from the audience on TV, but you were there. You got to see and hear a little bit more firsthand, more directly. Do you feel the audience is walking away tonight with an easier decision on primary day, or could it still be a toss-up here? I think it's still a toss-up. I mean, and I'm struck by the number of voters we've found on the ground here in South Carolina who have said they are still undecided. Did tonight's debate change the game for them? You know, we heard a lot of the same uh, talking points. So, again, it for some of them, as they've told us, it really could come down to waking up on Saturday here in South Carolina and making that final decision. And we still have a few more days of critical campaigning. Uh, tomorrow, the candidates hit the ground here and have a jam-packed uh, sprint to primary day here and then, of course, to Super Tuesday. All right, Natalie Brand, thank you again so much for your time. We'll be following that primary for you and all the action leading up to it. You can track updates on the go with us with the WCAX News app. We are joined now by Middlebury College political science professor Matthew Dickinson for his take. Always good to see you, Matt. At first glance here, who shined through in this debate? Well, they all had their moments, um, but I thought two in particular stood out. One, Mike Bloomberg rebounded from what is generally considered a disastrous opening performance in the last debate. He was solid. He stuck to his record as mayor as much as he could. And he parried the attacks, particularly from Elizabeth Warren, on some of the issues that tripped him up last time, like the non-disclosure agreements. The second person I thought, and this is crucial, is Joe Biden. Um, Biden has long touted South Carolina as his firewall, and in particular his support among African Americans. And I thought the combination of his ability to wed himself to Barack Obama and to talk about the record of the Obama-Biden administration in ways that appealed to uh, particularly black voters on issues like gun control, um, I thought that was a strong performance by Biden. So I think both of them heading into not just South Carolina, but in Bloomberg's case, Super Tuesday, uh, got about as much out of this as, as they could hope. Now, the target was really on Bernie Sanders back tonight, as he's one of the front runners. How did he weather the storm here? Well, you saw that right off the bat when Elizabeth Warren um, made the point that, listen, I agree with everything Bernie wants to do. I just think I'm better at accomplishing those goals. And this has been a longstanding critique of Bernie Sanders that he's better as sort of a standard bearer for a cause than he is in actually uh, achieving that cause. Having said that, you know, he weathered, I thought, most of the attacks. I thought, um, you know, he got tripped up a little bit in trying to get into the weeds of his policy towards authoritarian leaders. 
Um, and the gun policy issue, we knew that was going to come back, his support for gun manufacturers preventing them from being sued. And he admitted there was a mistake for his vote. So if you like Bernie's message, nothing that happened today changed that. If you're looking again for him to expand that coalition, particularly among black voters, I still think it's an open question about whether he's done that. Now, speaking of voters of color, they're going to play a critical role this weekend in the primary. Who, if anyone, do you feel made a compelling appeal to those voters? Well, again, getting back to my uh, original point, and, and you're absolutely right, uh, approximately 60 percent of the turnout in South Carolina is likely to be African-American. Um, Joe Biden has a track record with the African-American community. Some of the African-American leaders are going to come out and uh, endorse him. Some have already done that, um, like James Clyburn. Uh And again, Obama's name carries a lot of weight among African-American voters. And Biden has the credibility of working with Obama on a number of issues. And, uh, you know, his early record as a city councilor fighting against redlining uh, and issues, again, when he made that gun control attack on Bernie, there's a subtext here. Um, and that subtext is gun violence disproportionately affects African Americans. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon, Matt. Thank you. Thank you.